What's up, Renegade Nation? Before we begin the video, I'd like to give a big shout out to our most recent Patreon supporters Adam Hart, Lua Tomarelli Lou, Odd Hamster, Lady Susano, Navid, Alex Soli, Nia Vui, Nog Compass, Shadow Man, Brianna, Mary Elizabeth, Zero Bad Arts, Hammerface One, Trey Roberson, Zach Nelson, Azuma, Nell, Jacob Sumter, Dylan Keene, The Flumex, Jeremy James, Mikkel Ray Jr. Greeley, Drew Houts, Abigail Stember, Vocaloider 97, Kit Bremhall, Corbin Baker, Zach Manross, Keegan Richard, Samantha Bolin, Eddie Reinhardt, I Cup, U Cup, You Know What You Did, Daniel, Giuseppe Soakorv, and Brandon Chapman. And as always, I'd like to give a big shout out to our executive producer, The Anime Hybrid. Thank you all very much for your support. And if you want to support us on Patreon, feel free to click the link down below to find out more. We'll see you there. Whoa! Where did you come from? Check it out. Or you're gonna die! You know what? I need to do something about this because I'm not having enough fun playing this game. Yo! Now that I've got you right where I want you, I'm challenging you to a Pokemon battle, sucker! Get out of here! Me and you! So, all in all, I would say um, the Resident Evil franchise um, came out with a bang with the first few, the first two or three, and then four sort of changed the format, and it it got rave reviews at the time, but now, in retrospect, a lot of people are seeing it as the beginning of the downfall of yeah. Resident Evil, in which, don't get me wrong, I love Resident Evil 4. I felt the balance of, like, action and horror and, like, shock and, like, monsters was really cool. Yeah. but you It was re- totally different. It was. Yeah. But by the time you get to 5, you start to see the holes in the, in the way they, they made the games. You started to see, especially when they did 4. Because don't get me wrong, I love Shinji Mikami, and I love all the stuff that he's brought to video gaming, but how he changed the Resident Evil franchise sort of put it on a path to where, without continued innovation, it would do nothing but falter, and there were no real new innovations with 5 and 6. They just uh, split the stories up between different different characters in 6. I'll look at it like this, man. Go for it. When Resident Evil came out... Mm Mm-hmm. The PlayStation was relatively new. Mm-hmm. You know, the the landscape of video games at home were just going from more of a novelty thing. You know, the, the Nintendo, the Super Nintendo, the Sega Genesis, all that stuff had been around. But it was still, like, unrealistic. Yes. They were just pretty games, but it wasn't very i mean you just couldn't put yourself into a game like like clock tower like we were watching john tron's playthrough of the snes uh clock tower game yeah well you get to a game inspired by that like resident evil um and then you're seeing like more realistic characters and and the ways that the camera's set up and there's more of a shock factor than just stuff doing this or the you know what i mean it's like 3D. It's it's well full three dimensional. Yeah, with like a free roaming camera that follows you, and that was huge. Yes. Now I don't I don't care what you do. You're not going to recreate that. No. That's like it's, that's like movies like Wizard of Oz when they were like, oh, color, you yeah, know. And but sound it's like too, like with the jazz singer. Yeah, but but you could make a, you know Avatar is beautiful, but it's not Wizard of Oz. You know True. what I'm saying? Because that was the foundation for what we have in a lot of ways now and you know that's why people will go back and play the original (laughs) resident evil and be like what the hell are these controls it's because they were just this was cutting edge innovation keep in mind as well this was on the original playstation one controller which did not have analog not at the time no it did not and the tank controls were really the only thing they They did make a dual shock edition eventually yes Um, but even then, the tank controls were still there. Yeah. It's the only thing they knew. You know, the fixed camera in the 3D environment, and you had to 
work your way up and then eventually the camera would change and then you know you run into those infamous right. bad angles and then uh by the time four came around you know it was like a whole new world opened up because the over the shoulder third person camera right just changed everything well in retrospect you know people will look back at the model t right and be like I'm not going to drive that to get anywhere because, no. but I appreciate it for what it was. And if you had been back then and that's all that you knew, yeah. you would think that it was just the greatest thing of all time. Well, of course it's, it's that, that kind of cycle where people are casting judgment who either have been spoiled by what we've come into, you know, with the kind of games Very that we so. have now. And also people who are just too young to even remember what it was like to look back God. or, you know, they they don't they weren't there for it. There, there's actually an appreciation. When it was new, there's actually an appreciation for uh, a channel on YouTube, which has had a, a fair amount of flack thrown at it. Uh, the Fine Brothers React channel. They actually let kids play through old games and let and ask them how they feel about it. And a lot of these kids have played games before. Most kids nowadays have played video games since they were since they were able to pick something yeah. up. And with that. They saw that how difficult it was with some of these controls. Because one kid was just like, the cam- what's with the camera? Why, why can't I move the camera? And that was something that was you can't. not readily available back <laughs> you then. You just can't. Exactly. In, Dude, and you- GTA 3, man. Oh, When GTA man. 3 came out, and Halo. I mean, Halo my well. mind was blown. But, I mean, <clears throat> a free roam game, you just go? Yes, that what sandbox. The- and, and that has become a motif nowadays that pretty much almost every AAA game aspires for. Right. Like Assassin's Creed, Far Cry, Spider-Man. Spider-Man. I mean, you name it. I mean, hell, even S- God of War went Skyrim. There. Skyrim as well. Morrowind, yes. uh, you know, Oblivion, all those games. I, yeah. I, but the ga- those games way back kind of had that kind of thing going on a little yes. bit. But um, I feel like the hate that's showing up for Re- uh, Resident Evil 4 is coming from a place of they were taking a different approach. They were trying to evolve the franchise. They were doing something different, and they took a risk. They did. And people loved the game. Now you go back, and you're just like, well, these puzzle pieces don't fit perfectly together for the story. Well, you know... Maybe that's not what they were trying well, to do for that. Again, one. why is there? Again, why are all these pu- did these puzzles exist in the first Resident Evil games in the first three? Yeah, I mean, for instance, the piano one. Oh, play Moonlight Sonata. Oh, okay, and then all like, who is the owner of this house? Batman. You know, like play the piano, and all of a sudden the door opens up. Like seriously, and look, this is all part of gameplay elements that they add to enhance the gameplay and to actually like give people problem solving and also. To extend the gameplay, because you got to think back in the day, like old NES games, you could run through Castlevania, the first Castlevania game, in like forty minutes if you knew what you were doing. Yeah, I mean, you, I mean, just straight on, boop, 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 gone, you're done. Whereas, yeah. whereas gameplay later on, if the, you really want to stretch out gameplay, you know, there's the the way you can do stuff like grinding, you know, like like how you you talked about Persona One. No, I'm and, saying and Shin how, Megami Tensei. Yes. that's before Castlevania or before. A lot of games, really. This is one of the first games that you're collecting monsters, demons, persona. Like, yes, the SMT games started out, and I mean, you, you what, a hundred hours into those games? Yes. Easily. So, I mean, there were games that went the distance, but the first Resident Evil game had the ability to, you know, take a while. You put hours into it, and you could also. Um, have something that at the time was visually stunning yes. and a story that scared dude i was scared shitless of resident evil when i was a kid yeah and i mean really i no, was I dude you, the opening you. scene when you go through the hallway and you see that zombie eating the dude and i was just like hell no as a kid yeah. turned it off like five times before i could get past that and, you know so and, i mean uh, and here recently the resident evil franchise has had a little bit of a revitalization by going first person and by Capcom creating their own engine yeah. to build everything in, the RE engine, and now, after Resident Evil 7, which was amazing in my... Uh, did you ever play 7? Dude, 7 is amazing. 6 and was the last one. We, Whenever we get your gaming PC built, yeah. that's one of the first games that I'm giving you. I'm giving you a free... I'm giving you a 
I'm gonna gift you with Resident Evil Seven. And uh, also, and he'll actually be able to play it too because the gaming PC we're building for him is going to be a monster. He'll be able to crank this thing up to like a hundred and like 120 hertz. I'm like, trying to figure out what to name it. I'm not sure. Well, honestly, I really don't know either. And we'll have to ask the fans whenever we build it. It's like like a creative name, and if one hits us, then we'll go with that because hey, they paid for it. Yeah, I mean they they're the ones that donated. Yeah. Do to, you guys name it? Yes. And I will decorate it accordingly to the best of my abilities. But, you know, us talking about PCs and everything, um, it's kind of hard for us to mention PCs considering that this uh, was announced at the PlayStation 5 event, which Capcom has a very good relationship with Sony. A very good relationship. Because they're the ones who gave gave Capcom a chance with a a first-party game on their brand-new system coming out, Sony PlayStation. And this is where we find ourselves now, with The Village, a.k.a. Resident Evil 8. Chad has never seen this. I've seen clips, but I have not seen the whole thing. I want to know what's going on. Let's get it up on screen. Oh, by the way, the internet's out so uh, down here, so I actually had to download these and uh, get them uh, on a drive just so we could play them. Problems. <laughs> First world problems, everybody. Here problems. we go. Problems. <laughs> greeted them with a dark, cold silence. The bush is empty. Yet determined to find the berries, the rascal broke free of Mother's grasp and vanished into the trees. Mother's worried cries faded fast as the girl ran on, over vine, under branch, and into the forest deep. What is it with that creepy story? It's just a local tale. You're really into that stuff. Quit being so paranoid. No, no! Friendly! Friendly! Who are you? Who sent you? Come on. They're coming. Who is? I saw ninjas. <laughs> Chris? Sorry, Ethan. Why? 2021. Dang. Next year. So, yeah. Um, Why were there ninjas? I don't know. There's a lot of stuff in this that I <laughs> and werewolves. That's and a, that's <laughs> the other thing too. I heard a rumor that they were gonna like have a contemporary form of werewolves, it, like from you know Resident Evil style. You know mm-hmm. where they because the weird thing. There's a lot of stuff that happens in Resident Evil Seven that honestly takes everything back to square one. <clears throat> it takes everything back to the basics. That is actually what people were clamoring for. They were clamoring for something that. That it didn't drag the story back, but it put the it put the franchise back on ground level where things were scary again, mm-hmm. and it succeeded very well. And I'll say this: Resident, or Resident Evil Eight, what they're what it looks like they're doing here, 
is they're taking the storyline that a very similar storyline what was in four you know remote village out in the middle of nowhere they're changing up the motif to where it's more of a winter based transylvania style versus like a versus like a a spanish a, like a spanish villa mm -hmm. and instead they're putting us in sort of a and sort of a Transylvania feel, mm -hmm. and trying to resurrect some of the old horror motifs, like with the Wolfman. I don't know if they're going to do vampires, but that woman there yeah. looked like she was sucking someone's blood. Yeah. In which, that's the thing about the the viruses that exist in Resident Evil. They've they've changed. They've evolved. They've turned things into these horrible putrid amalgamations. But if they're refined. If they're refined to execute a, a specific thing, such as turning someone into into you know a wolf or some or something else, that could be something very interesting. Now, how they execute it is completely is completely in the dark for me right now. But I'm excited. I, I want to play that. It's crazy because it's like they're taking you know the European folklore monsters. Mixing it with like some, you know, the the whole new age like biological warfare mm -hmm. horrors, which are existential crisis really, yet somehow created cool. by like people, and and then you have the fucking Lovecraftian elements with like the tentacle monster evolutions yeah, and the shit. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, yeah. No, it's it, like the looming dread effect. Looming dread, yeah, like a like a existential threat. Um, mixed with with European folklore, it's crazy. It, it is, and the thing with the that, that's actually one thing about the seventh uh, Resident Evil Seven uh, that actually caught me off guard was that it actually it actually pulled everything off really really well with mixing the styles of body horror. Mm -hmm. You know, like tr like how uh, Junji Ito is so good at that, you know, the Japanese artist is really yeah. good at that, and combining it with, like, southern, like, old-school southern horror, like uh, Texas Chainsaw mm -hmm. Massacre, and, uh, and 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 various ones set in the American South. Yeah. Because that's predominantly where it's set. And <clears throat> it's also the first Resident Evil game ever predominantly no, written wait, by a I, Westerner. I think, isn't that the one I saw you try on the P PS4 VR? Yes. Okay, that, yeah, I yeah. saw a little bit of yeah, it. Yeah, that's but, you saw the opening. Yeah, I've which, never played it. Which, I, I didn't even get, I barely got to the house, uh, the first, uh, the house there. So, uh, Chad has not played the game by himself, but no. he will, he will soon, he will soon, I bet. <laughs> uh, after he, after he's done playing Persona 4 Golden. Oh, no, that'll never happen. Oh, okay. So I'll he's be never going to play I'll be anything playing that else. game forever. It's just like every two weeks or so, I'll take a couple hours and play it. I've been playing it since 20, 2012 when I got it on the Vita, and he's still playing, still it playing, still it. collecting stuff. So still playing it. yeah, and hopefully Persona Three will come out here. Soon and I just as well. got it on PC too. So I mean, I'm just always going to be playing that game. God. Same with Skyrim. <laughs> Same with. Uh, Soul Silver. Now that I have that a physical copy of it, I've been playing it on emulators for years. After I sold it when I was broke, finally got it back. But I just there's certain games, man, where I just I'm not going to stress it. I'm just going to enjoy it. You yeah. Know? Unlike uh, Pokemon Sword, which I only have three days to collect 46 Pokemon on. That's right. Because uh, you're trying Wednesday, to get it before the, the DLC deal. comes out. Wednesday, dude. That's gonna be interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah, just seeing seeing you under the under the knife, just like I gotta do it. I gotta do it. Let's go, let's go. I just have a feeling like Tuesday night I'm gonna be <sighs> Quinn running a marathon. Yeah. Hey, Quinn, Quinn, <laughs> come on! I need your help. I got I got, I got three. Yeah. I got well, four there's more. been people in the stream helping me out too, so oh, yeah. I, I yeah, really appreciate Rachel, that. Yeah. Bay. I mean, you've had Sam in there. Mm -hmm. You've had a lot of people just... that have been helping me. Yeah. yeah, so I really appreciate that, guys. Yeah. So maybe you'll help me on Resident Evil as well. Oh, whenever. don't worry. There's <laughs> there's so many secrets and there's so much stuff for you to find in Resident Evil Seven, dude. I, like me going back and playing it again. Uh, I, actually, I'm going to get you the Ultimate Edition that has like all the like DLC and stuff, mm -hmm. and you actually learn more about the characters in the game mm. by playing. And it's riveting stuff. It's really really cool. And, uh, Maybe I can convince Nikki to play it with me. Oh God, dude, that uh, she'd like it because it it's it. You see, there's certain games that are good for backseat gaming. Mm -hmm. um, the Uncharted series is really good for that because it plays out like an action movie, 
This one plays out like a damn good horror movie. And where it's in first person, the immersion level, I think, is even better than what it was when it was in third person. Hmm. That's just me, though. That's literally just me. And plus, there's a lot of there's a lot of really cool stuff in Seven that I think you and Nikki would both love. So, yeah. Let's do it. I le- yeah, y'all will have to do it. But anyway, that's going to do it, ladies and gentlemen. This was Resident Evil 8 The Village. Uh, coming out in 2021. Don't know the exact date, but when it does come out, oh, you rest assured, I'm going to be playing that shit. I'm going to be playing that shit. Uh, I know they're releasing it on PS5, and everyone's and everyone's probably going to get it for PS5. But if it comes out same day for PC, I'm getting it on PC. Because, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> look, and look, I love, I love Sony, and I love Microsoft, and I love Nintendo, but damn the amount of stuff you can play on PC is just astounding. It will at least be three years after the systems come out before I buy them. I mean, I'm just I'm, saying that not only because of the I'm, price point, but... I will have a gaming PC. What's going to be the point? I'm probably going to get. I'm probably going to get maybe one of the maybe one of the new systems because mm-hmm. there's several exclusives. The Miles that, Morales looks that badass. looks amazing. Yeah, it does. The like and also the PlayStation Five that they have coming out with it. Mm-hmm. I want that. Yeah, no, the that's what I'm black, saying. Oh yeah, the red and black PS5. Yeah, you were saying the special edition ones. That's yeah. what I meant. Oh yeah, the, and the Miles Morales PS5 looks sick. I'm, I'm going to look into getting that whenever it comes out. And also, uh, the uh, also uh, there's going to be a special edition that they're going to do of the Xbox uh, Series X uh, for Halo Infinite uh-huh. uh, when that comes out, which I'm interested because Frank O'Connor has come back to uh, be uh, the creative director on the game. He was the creative director of the first three Halo games. Wow. So they brought him back into the fold as a creative director on it to bring the game back up to the standards of the old. It's confusing to me when people are knocking it out of the park, knocking it out of the park, knocking it out of the park, and then the companies are just like, I think we need to make a change here. I, yeah, they when when Microsoft told Bungie, yeah, we want you to only make Halo games for the next 10 years, and they're like, no, we want to do something else. We have this new IP called Destiny we really want to try out. Would you all be interested? Well, it's something new, which is what we're not interested... This is before Phil Spencer, by the way. Right. This is before Phil Spencer... Got his hands on micro. Got his hands on the Xbox game division and has turned it into an, a a really good like company now. I mean, <clears throat> uh, anyway, we got to move on, everybody. We'll, we'll sit here Quick talking. Quick PS Five question. Sure. Backwards compatibility. I haven't no kept up with it. No. Okay. No announcement. Right. But the Series X fully backwards compatible with one, uh, three sixty and Xbox. Looking at you. Looking at you, Sony. You know what you got to do. Anyway, that's going to do it, everybody. So until next time, signing off, I'm Nate. I'm Chad. And we'll see you in the next one, everybody. Peace out.